Welcome to Conversations on Creativity and Eco-Social Change. I'm here today with Felipe gonzalez Gill and Maria pete Cuca to talk about transformative friendships. Felipe and Maria, could I ask you to introduce yourselves? Yes, um, my name is Felipe. Uh, I, I am 40 years old. I don't know if that's... Uh, good or bad. Uh, sometimes I feel like a boomer. Some of the day I feel that I understand uh, the new narrative, but I work at SEMS 98, which is a small organization from the south of Spain uh, based in Seville. And we basically try to uh, foster uh, synergies, connections and, and friendships uh, between people uh, with different profiles, from activism to artists, from educators and researchers to uh, media makers and journalists and that's basically what we do we mediate uh, and we try to co-create uh, things devices uh, stories for a better world whatever that means so my name is maria petekuka i am based in bilbao i am a cultural researcher and and producer sometimes working as a as a curator um i basically consider myself as a um, um, cultural worker in the broader sense, so um, doing all kinds of tasks that are involved, usually involved in cultural projects, which are many. So um, uh, I am very much focused on, on research, if possible, and that means a lot of uh, studying and reading and, and writing and making, imagining formats so that this uh, uh, amount of um, ideas or for myself but not only for other people as well can get out and reach other people so um, but it also means uh, working for other people's projects like uh, and from fundraising to coordination to mediation to to whatever um, so I, I am very much uh, committed to um, to um, to presenting what I do as a, as a balance between these two two sides, one which looks as more intellectual, but it's not only intellectual, and the other one that looks like more practical, but it involves a lot of creativity as well. So uh, that's what we do in the cultural realm, I guess all of us, in fact. Felipe, when I asked you to nominate some transformative cases to the Creatures Observatory, you actually nominated your relationship with Maria. I was really, um, really inspired by that. And I wondered, could you tell us a little bit about what was so transformative about meeting Maria and building a relationship with her? I nominated Maria to the Observatory of Creatures because we at SEMOS 98 admire her. Uh, it's really funny because before you know someone, you have different stories. And in the case of Maria, uh, when we had the festival, which was our main tool to meet new people and to foster these friendships that I was telling before, uh, yeah, we always were looking for yeah new people, new meaning that people that we didn't know from before face to face, to invite them to the festival to do a workshop or a lecture or 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 any of the formats we were testing. Uh, and before we met Maria for the first time, some people, I won't say names, said, no, well, Maria, she's, you know, a bit uh, called super smart, but cold person. And that was completely a lie. Uh, so that was a pre prejudice from that person. Uh, and I have to say that Maria is one of the warmest person that we have uh, met. But more uh, importantly, because I think w when you meet friends while working, that's something really valuable. And, and we don't uh, uh, undervalue that uh, in the sense that sometimes you say, well, we work uh, with friends and that is assumed sometimes uh, from a traditional sector, or from a traditional point of view, as uh, a lack of professionalism, professionalism. And in this case, in our history, the people that we have collected as friends are uh, the key. Uh, they are the heart uh, 
of, of what we do. So we keep going because we have met these people. So Maria is one of these cases. But beyond uh, the friendship, I have to say also that she was the first person to introduce to us uh, something which now sounds really obvious uh, and, and, and assumed, but it was this distinction between the productive economy and the reproductive economy coming from the feminist uh, theories and practices. And we had a, a weird encounter, one of these weird encounters that we used to organize during the festival uh, called Microbes. The idea was to gather people from the precarious cultural sector and to understand our small role within the whole uh, situation. Uh, and, and during these uh, sessions uh, in Seville, uh, we had to introduce ourselves and to explain what we were doing. And she was the one bringing that to us. So that was really important, not just theoretically, but also because it led us to start working on care. And, and, and we dedicated two festivals to the topic of Kopilov, which was um, uh, basically affected by, but, uh, by what Maria uh, brought to us. And that's why she's really important to us, both on a friendship level, but also uh, theoretically speaking. And lately, and just to finalize this, I think she is leading in Spain something which is now uh, 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 happily at a global trend, which is we cannot stay in the cultural sphere or cultural sector as we were before, just uh, producing things without the ecological uh, context we are all facing as a uh, humanity. And the exhibition she organized, and I luckily visited before the COVID cases started increasing in Spain, uh, is really one very good example of uh, the research she has been doing uh, lately and why we need to follow her and other people like her uh, on these practices. And I think it's really connected to creators in that sense. So we need, from uh, the Samos 98 perspective, to learn uh, a lot from many people, but Maria is one of the people that we just basically follow. First of all, I have to say I feel extremely honored and 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 uh, a bit embarrassed by what Felipe just just said because uh, coming from him and from Zemos, which for me are really one of the leading cultural projects in Spain, that have and I don't I know this is a big word, but I I am I am conscious of it that have made history in the really <laughs> and the, in the small history of the cultural sector in Spain, Zemos is there. And so, uh, so I feel extremely, extremely honored and, and, and responsible also. Oh, okay, so it's important what you, what you say or what you don't say. Um, for me, Zemos, I really don't remember how we met in the sense of being aware of each other. But I assume it was probably in those years, maybe here Felipe can help, where at least for me, I was starting to write a, a blog. I was writing this blog for 10 years. And um, so um, that was the beginning of the 2000s. We were few people in Spain interested by what was happening on the internet from a cultural or artistic perspective. Um, you know, some people were interested in it from a, a strictly technological side or for business. And um, we were a few few artworks, really. Um, and um, so we started to, and this is how I am building the, the story retrospectively, but I think we started to build a small community. And identifying each other, oh, oh, there are these people in Sevilla which are also interested in that. In that and I am too. So, so we would... I don't know, share emails or comments on our respective uh, blogs. They, they, Themos had a, had a blog community as well. So we're gathering many, many people with all the same interests, interest, but I mean, many people, but we were a few. This was pre-social networks. Um, in a moment where um, uh, spending some time on the, on the internet was still <laughs> considered as, okay, guys, you don't have a lot of friends. And um, 
so for me it was very very important to um this moment where you you change from uh, feeling alone with your obsession to realizing that there are other people having this obsession obsession so uh, then uh, everything changes everything changes because you start a community and uh and you support each other and you exchange views maybe you are you agree you don't that, that doesn't matter but but you are part of something that's bigger and um so for me stemos is that in my, my in my personal story and uh, it's been like that for since up to now and 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 of course things have changed a lot uh, for both sides um the internet and the digital technologies are probably not so important anymore uh we have all the concerns and um but we i feel we are still committed to uh, feeling uh part of the same uh, resistance community and um i was saying that for me semos is um is a is a very inspiring organization because um i think they are the ones that made it that that, that really resisted <laughs> with a lot of uh, stubbornness i don't know if that's that's the right word but it's super important to be stubborn <laughs> and to, to keep with your trail, you know, and they are the ones that keep with the trail, whatever happens, they find a way to do it. And, um, and that's, that's so inspiring. And I could go on uh, <laughs> with uh, that, but I will, I will leave it here. Wow, that's such a beautiful story about kind of coming together on the internet. And um, could I turn the conversation slightly towards sustainability and ask you, Maria, what does this idea of sustainability mean to you and your work? Well, the, the question of sustainability is, is, is difficult because sustainability is something that we tend to not see unless you lack of it. Uh, on, only when, when you feel yourself vulnerable or in danger you you realize what you need to sustain yourself because when you have it you don't you don't realize so um <clears throat> so it's very difficult to speak of sustainability um as being precisely this close received that you can apply that doesn't work it doesn't work like that i i, I really uh feel like coming back to this uh, notion of um community and and networking um because that's what, um, in the longest run uh, of your practice, uh, supports you in, in many ways. It can be material or economical. Um, it can be political in the sense of um, providing a sense of, of purpose, a sense of purpose to what you do. And uh, which is something that, of course, we, we go through a lot of precarity, but I, th I think that the, the, the most dangerous uh, vulnerability of, of uh, as cultures practitioners is to renew the sense of purpose of what you do. Um, <clears throat> so so uh, uh, for me, and I, and I say this really in the, in the, in the longest uh, run, because I think before I, I wasn't that much aware of it, um, sustainability is very much linked to this sense of, of purpose and to having the, the people uh, around you that make this valuable and uh, that give meaning not only to what you do but that you can give meaning to what they do and, and, and so you feel that you are building something together and uh, that has a, a social meaning because that, yeah it might sound really pretentious but I think we share that with with Felipe and, and, and with Themos that we believe that what we do is social work. Um, so how to sustain yourself? You need, you need, yeah, you need your friends, but it's not friends also only in the sense of personal um, relations that people you like or you love. It's people with, with whom you, you share something, this sense of purpose. Oh, I feel like what the interview is doing is building up this really rich and multi-layered understanding of what a transformative friendship is. Philippe, I wondered about learning. Um, what part does that play in transformative friendships? We, we have been learning through mistakes. That sounds as a as an obvious thing to say when it comes to learning. But in our case, 
when we uh, used to organize the festival, we uh, work a lot with the intuition of, okay, uh, every year we had to pick a topic and around that topic, uh, we had to build a program. Uh, but, but then uh, after the, the festival, we, we try to be self-critical with the things which were not working. Uh, in our case, there, there is a turning point uh, and and it's funny because as as Maria was saying before, we had a a community, maybe not a an homogeneous uh, one, uh, but made by different people, uh, not being at the same room all the time. But we had some people in common as well from Bilbao. Bilbao. Uh, the organization is 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 called Colabora Bora now, but before it, it was called Amaste. So we organized one festival dedicated to the idea of expanded education. Uh, and, and all this, a lot of these people from this community came to the festival, invited by us or because they wanted to come. But the setting of the festival was really, really traditional. And we, uh, we um, were uh, carefully told after the festival that you cannot organize something called expanded education with uh, traditional panels and with a very academic setting. So that was the first time we realized that uh, we had to hack that, but beyond what the word hack, hacking uh, means, uh, we needed to really work on the formats of the festival to make them less male-oriented uh, and, and less uh, affected by a mainstream... Uh, notion of, of masculinity because basically that's mainstream academia like competition and showing yourself and occupying the space with, with your thoughts and not carefully listening to each other. So that's uh, one thing and I think that was 2010 approx. But then there are two things that I can mention and I think it has to do also with Maria's approach. One is the scale. Sometimes when it comes to cultural events the by default idea from some institutions and some funders and foundations is we need to make to make this big and we always from then we always wanted to work small meaning you know a small uh, group of people because we discovered that through small groups you can build intimacy you can foster this uh, friendship these connections rather than inviting 400 500 people like a, to a huge congress in in which you don't know uh, the other people. And, and, and last is documenting what we did. That's something we have been uh, constantly, constantly doing because if you document what you do, you can later, even if it's small, small meaning 30 people, 40 people, understand uh, the experiment because in many cases it was an experiment. And in that sense, I think we can relate to science, even though we have been feeling insecure about our scientific uh, uh, approach, because we feel more like, yeah, the cultural creative practitioners. But when you document what you do, uh, if it's experimental, you can understand the value of it. And you can also improve the mistakes you did, etc. And I think that's something Maria was doing from the beginning uh, when she mentioned the blog. I think the blog was also a way to uh, document intuitions with other people and to build this community, being self-critical, but also growing uh, in a social sense. Yeah, I really love this focus on kind of documenting and learning, and that's kind of an iterative process across sometimes quite experimental practices. Could I ask you to say something maybe a bit more formalized about impact, how you think in a longer term or at a bigger scale about the kinds of change that your work makes? Yeah, the question of, of impact is also weird when it comes to, to the cultural practices. Um, I would like to share that I, I am currently um, working for, for an organization doing some, um, some uh, analysis of the projects that have been funded. And um, and the, there is uh, we are asked to answer this question of impact of the impact of the projects, and so we are analyzing <laughs> projects that were uh, active for periods of long periods of like two, three, even three years, and uh, so you can really okay you can 
ask the question of impact. And what we are seeing is that um, there is um, not usually a very visible and immediate impact. And where is, where, when there is something like that, I would doubt that we can call that impact. It's maybe a visible effect, a restitution, something that's on the media, an exhibition, whatever. But the real impacts happen, and this is for all the projects, on the long term, even after the project is finished, and they happen on the on the people that have been involved in the project. So um, it's transformative for the people, and this doesn't mean that that it's not transformative. That this transformation stays in the realm of the of the people, because these people then go on and on. So, um, but not only on the for the team, but also for all the collaborators. So that's the projects that are really transformative, are, are those that transform the practices of the people involved. How can we measure that impact? We don't know. So um, I, I would say we have to use our, our imagination and our creativity as, as uh, cultural practitioners to in, invent uh, ways of making that visible, of, to invent indicators, but also to invent new words. And um, we need a new vocabulary to speak about the, that kind of impact, which is not visible, but there is an impact. There is an impact in the sense of a reverberation. And you have, you have lived a, a, this kind of project, you know what it is. When we were defining before this notion of friendship, which is not just personal and not just professional, that's clearly a value that we have been discovering through these communities. Uh, and also that's something we you can hardly document because if you put that in a report, I made a new friend. It seems like a, a homework for school, right? Like eh, I made a new friend, but indeed it is crucial. <laughs> it is crucial. So one of the things I can proudly say about SEMOS is that we fostered new friendships. That's That's something we have been doing for so long. Uh, and that's something uh, which is uh, our social work. Uh, sometimes you cannot make it, sometimes uh, affinities uh, uh, don't come that fast. And as Maria was saying before, sometimes that connection really flourishes later, like two or three years later. So, uh, yeah, if we could work on how to document uh, these connections without sounding naive and love is in the air, uh, because that's also something being self-critical we need to understand. Every time we apply for funding, we are the best and we say that we are the best and we all say, yeah, we are going to create, we are going to change the world. We all know that after the project we tried, but you hardly can change uh, deep things with a two or three years project. But at the same time, I'm sure that we have to uh, change the way we report projects and, and the way we document and we uh, value them. Yeah. Yeah, I think all of that really resonates with me and what we find in creatures that what we're calling the project I view is never enough, that things kind of shift across timelines of kind of programs or relationships, personal missions, or whole careers. I wonder if we could maybe close the interview by hearing a little bit about what you're up to at the moment, Maria, and what projects you're working on. Well, the, the, the last project I've been working on is um, uh, an exhibition at the CCCB in Barcelona, Center of Contemporary Culture. Um, and it's an exhibition that started as a, as a navigation, I would say, as a personal navigation through last book by Donna Haraway, Staying with the Trouble. And uh, that has evolved into something slightly different, still very much inspired about that, but slightly different with uh, Lynn Margulis, biologist Lynn Margulis, in the center of it. So um, uh, basically around the idea of symbiosis. And, um, and the last uh, funding... Uh, to answer your question, I need to sl slightly get into some some scientific facts here, but um, the, this uh, the same symbiotic and the symbiotic theory, but by uh, Margulis really puts forward the idea that the symbiosis is a main driving force of evolution, <clears throat> in historically, but also of the of, of the 
um, of the history of evolution. I mean, of of uh, of the of the life on, on Earth, but but also of the way we still are all intimately interconnected. So um, so all us uh, Earth beings are part of uh, a unity of life, which manifests manifests itself in different forms. So um, this comes from biology, but it, it all obviously has a deep philosophical implications and cultural and political implications. So um, <clears throat> it's connected to the multi-species new paradigm, to biocentrism and, and, and ecological thought and, and a lot of that, of course, but it also implies a change, a shift of paradigm. And um, so that's where I am now. And um, for me, it's very interesting because it's really on the edge of uh, what is not called science and what is called whatever else, <laughs> you know, philosophy, cultural studies, whatever, art. Um, but it's it, but it, I am attracted to that edge because it's uh, totally unstable. And uh, uh, <laughs> Felipe was, was uh, telling before about mistakes. You can only make mistakes when you are in a place of uncertainty, but that's so challenging. Um, so where I am now, it's, it's there and I'm, I'm, I'm basically somebody very, uh, someone very curious. So I'm following my curiosity, whatever it takes me. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that's a good answer to the question of what you do now, but it's a very, uh, 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 intimate uh, answer. <laughs>